Hi, I'm Shanley Triggs. I'm a watercolor artist from here in Milton. And today I'm gonna to demonstrate a small fall still life. Um, actually, there's a picture of that still life on this bag. And all the supplies are gonna be um, given to you by the Milton Public Library. And in this bag at curbside pickup, and I am going to go over those right now, what's in the bag. I'm going to show you and put it back in. Um, first off, we have the watercolor paints, which are actually they're Yarka. Um, anytime you want to look, at them, look them up online, just put in Yarka, Y-A-R-K-A, and it'll come up uh, quickly if you if anyone out there wants to buy them. They're very nice, rich, watercolor, transparent um, paints, and um, they're great for beginners. So that's the first, um, the first item. You have two water containers, which is very important because um, you can't have enough water and enough clean water. So that's really good to have. Um, you can use some you have at home also. Um, two brushes. <laughs> One uh, is either an 8 or a 10. This is a 10 and most of them are simply Simmons. Uh, un again, you can put that online and find that brush. Um, and then you have a little wooden one, which I'm going to show you what this is used for. Um, you have a little picture of the end result, just so you can keep it in mind. Uh, everybody's end result is different, so you know, that's just one. That's mine. Um, you have the five by seven drawing on watercolor paper, and this is the, this is what you're going to be painting. And keep that clean. Um, two pieces of um, watercolor paper for testing your paint, which is really important, because you don't want to, you know, put the paint on the paper without knowing what the color is. <laughs> also. Um, on one of those are two pieces of tape which you can secure the water the uh, painting on the top and bottom you put the put these little pieces of tape secure it to a table or a board whichever it's a good idea to secure that painting i may not do it myself today because i might have to pick it up and show you a couple things you have two pieces of paper towel um which will come in handy, believe me. And also a card, my card, which if you have any questions after, um, please feel free to email me. I will answer you. Um, I just really want uh, so many people to enjoy this art because I do. So if you have any questions, really don't feel, you know, feel shy. Just, just email me and I'll answer your questions. There's also a, a paper, I put a few things on it, put all the um, supplies and where to find them on this paper, and also a few tips, success in watercolor. Clean paper, clean water, clean brushes, okay? So that's really important. Um, patience is another thing I put down there. You really need it, okay? So we'll start. And that's, that's your supplies. One more thing, which is really important. This is an acorn. Everyone gets one because I have like tons in my yard. <laughs> uh, there are three in the painting. It's really, um, really nice to have the real thing when you're painting a still life or anything. Uh, just to pick it up, know it, get to know it, turn it around, feel the texture. It's very important. It comes through in your painting, believe it. Um, so I put it in because it's just adorable to begin with, but it gives you a really good idea of what you're painting, okay? Um, I also today brought, I brought a leaf, maple leaf, which was really beautiful when I picked it up. It's a little dull, but we'll make it brighter. And the poplar leaf, which is one of my favorites, and we're gonna make it bright yellow. Okay, so we'll start. Um, we're going to paint the, fir the bigger pumpkin first, and that'll give you an idea of how to approach the pumpkin, so you can just flip over and do the small one yourself. Um, first thing you have to do, <clears throat> very important, is to mix up your paint and make sure 
that you have enough paint before you start the project or whatever object you're, you're painting. This is not that much, this little pumpkin, but you'd be surprised. So I mixed it up and I tested it on my paper. Um, I like to put a little more, I'd like it to be a little brighter than that. So I'm gonna add a little more paint, okay? Add a little too much water. And when you do, you just tap the brush on the paper towel. I just have to, I thought I had this right, but. <clears throat> Um, actually, I didn't tell you, but I put a little red with the orange just to make it a deeper, brighter color, okay? Uh, the pumpkin itself, if you really look at a pumpkin, is a duller color, <laughs> but I like it bright, so that's what I choose to do. This little brush I told you about, this is what you're going to use to put your water on the object you're painting. So you soak the brush in water and just bring it out and... put a lot of water on this because it absorbs, the paper absorbs the water a lot and you want that to be wet for a while so you can go in with more paint if you need to. Uh, be careful about the lines so where, and this brush is, you know, this is not your best brush, okay, so you have to be careful with it. It's not much spring to it, but that's, you know, that's something we have to deal with, right? Um, so this is called painting wet into wet. You're putting your wet paint into the wet paper. And um, it's a little too wet right now. It's got a sheen on it, a high sheen on it. It should be rather dull yet and also if there's a little bit of a puddle you can put your paper towel up to that and drain it off so you don't have to wait forever um, you can also blow on that a little bit so i'm going to go in i think it's a little wet but see it's got a little sheen to it it's a little too it's a little too high but I think I'm going to go in. Um, what helps is if your brush isn't, you know, really full of water or paint. So let's just see how this ha this works. Now, when you are painting something round, you have to paint to the contour of your um, object and subject. Um, that means we paint round, okay? We don't go across. So you paint around like this and this uh, we have to load the brush so put your brush right down into it it seems like the water has dried quite quickly here <laughs> anyway you just keep you know be patient load the brush like that spread your brush out so you cover more territory because you, when the water dries and it's it's all dry, you really can't go in until you leave it for 24 hours to dry completely, or or uh, you use a hair dryer, but that sometimes dulls it. So remember, we are painting a, going around like this and not straight across, and we're putting what basically we're just putting one. No, one paint, one load of paint in. Now there are those lines in pumpkins we all know intellectually. So we're going to do something about that. But right now I do want, um, I do want to put some darker paint down here because down here there's not as much light. The light's coming from the top. It's coming on top of the pumpkin and I can show you something else you can do instead of, and that's what I'll do today because it's 
just saves a little bit of time. So what you can do is you can rinse out your brush and then pinch out all the moisture in the brush. And if your if your paint is wet enough, which I think it is, you can go in and just flatten the brush a little and take some of that paint out, okay? And show the light that way. And just make sure you dab the paper towel though. Okay? Um, when that dries, that'll show quite nicely. You can only do it once, so don't go back in. And we'll come back later and just put a few lines just to indicate those pumpkin lines that are always, of course, part of the pumpkin. Okay, so that's how you do, that's how you approach the pumpkin, okay? And you'll see there's, there's paint there that I'm just tipping the paper and moving around a little bit. So the next one we'll do, I believe, we'll do the little, um, the little leaf, and we're going to do it the same way. Put the water in. Because I have orange paint here, which I want to put a little bit in, I'm going to do that next. So I forgot to bring my gourd, which I had at home. Same thing. You just put the water in and try not to go, you know, out out of the lines. I hate to keep everybody restricted, but <laughs> it makes it easy at the end when you don't have to do a lot of cleanup. So here we have the same situation where um, you have a little sheen there. Um, with this, I'd like to have a little more water because, you know, uh, you can just watch it spread. I'm going to put some red in there. In fact, I think I'll add a little water just so you can see how that spreads out on its own, which is kind of fun. And I'll put a little orange in, even though we have a lot of orange. It's kind of fun to do the maple leaves because everybody knows knows them, especially here in Vermont, and we can make our own colors. It's fun to do that. Um, I'm going to put, you really have to rinse out your brush if you want to get the true color, which I want to get. Um, I want to get the yellow. I love yellow. I just want to get that in there. I think it brightens it up and it's mixing. If you see how it's mixing in because there's water there, sometimes you have to redraw with your brush and get that shape which I just had to do um, so I really love that I love the look I love it's so bright and cheery and warm so I like that a lot so now I'll go on to the gourd which is green um, they're all co different colors, of course. Um, lots of times it's deep green, but I like a brighter color, so I'm going to mix up a lighter green. So what you have to do is you just have to clean your palette a little bit. And this is your palette, by the way. I should have told you that. Um, if it comes apart from your paints, don't worry about it. Um, these paints are gently used, as you might notice but there's probably a hundred paintings left. They're so rich and it's quite a lot of paint, a lot of paint left on them. Um, so anyway, you have to clean your palette and I'm going to mix up my green for the gourd, which I got green. So I'm gonna use the green. And with these paints, you really have to add water. They're, they're so rich, you know. These are real um, beautiful watercolor paints for the price. Um, they're transparent and as long as you mix the paints right, you know. I'm going to put a little, a tiny bit of purple in this because I want it to be a little darker. That's where you have to be careful because you could dull it down a lot. Let's just this is what you have to do. You have to check your 
check your color before you go on to your paper. Um, I added that little bit of purple, which is fine. I can also add a little yellow. When you go in to add color, different colors from this, go in on a corner so you don't, you know, mess the whole cake up because you don't want to do that. Okay, so see how I get lost in my conversation and I it's important, really important to make enough paint so you have enough to cover the subject. Okay, that's what I'm doing here. And that's where your patience comes in because it's more fun to paint, okay, than to mix colors, but this has to be a little bit darker. I didn't say it ahead of time, but you should really spray your paints before you begin so they're ready and moist. Um, sometimes I spray them the night before. If you don't have a spray bottle, you can just run them under, you know, the tap water. Okay, so we're ready to go on that. And I'm doing the same thing, okay? We are... That won't hurt that much. That's there's a little bit of orange there, okay? So that's good that happened because you've got to rinse your brush. Okay, that's gonna fall. And do the same thing, okay? Just go around. Um, where the water goes, so goes the paint. So remember that little tip. Be careful. I think it just went out, but that's okay. I put a little, I'll have to use that trick here where the water seeps into the paper towel. Just keep it on the object because I put a little too much on, but that's okay. Uh, <laughs> tip it up. And I think that that's, that's looking pretty good to go, go in. Um, there's a sheen to it. It's not really a high sheen. It's so I think I'm gonna go in. Um, make sure you hit the paper towel with your brush before you go in the first time. And I'm gonna again. This is circular. It's a circular form. The gourd here. So make sure you paint to the contour of your subject. It's very important. It comes through. Believe me, it comes through in the end result. And flatten your brush, load your brush, flatten it out so you can cover that territory before it dries. This is not a big problem here, but believe me, when you're in the middle of a big painting and everything is drying, you've got to know how to cover that quickly. And that's one way of doing it. I've got a little too much water on this brush, so I'm hitting the paper towel, okay? Um, just to drain it out a little bit. I'm cleaning up the edges as I go here, which um, I can do because there's enough water. So I'm gonna clean that up right now. Um, there's also on this gourd, there's a pattern, which is really beautiful. Um, and I'd like to indicate that pattern. Um, I can do it by painting a little more or taking out some paint, which I did with the pumpkin. If you look over here at the pumpkin, you see how the light is hitting that pumpkin and that's the, that's the um, end result I wanted. I wanted you to see the light instead of, and I'm gonna go back in and do a little work there. But that's the gourd. I think it's, don't go back in. A secret to watercolor is to do it once, put your paint in and leave it alone. That's the patience, just leave it alone for 24 hours and you get that translucent look. Because the watercolor paper is a big part of this watercolor look. It comes through, it's beautiful. All right, so that's that's the gourd. I'm gonna do the I'm gonna do one of the acorns. 
Uh, we can flip over here and do this little leaf though. You really want to swish that brush clean, okay, if you're going to go from color to color. So I just want to do a touch of this yellow. Let's pick up too much of that. And just do this little yellow leaf because I think it's beautiful. I love the shade. And um, I put a little orange in there just to make it a little, little bit gold. Oh, there's some in here and there. So that is that little poplar leaf, which is beautiful. And as you can see, it's a lot brighter than the real thing. <laughs> but uh, that's what makes it nice, I think. Anyway, so I'll go and do the acorn, and then I'll show you how to do the background color. And um, you should be able to go out on your own. So I've got to clean this palette a little bit to get that brown. And I'm going to leave some of this orange because I might use it in the stem. Okay. Okay, so the brown we can just take from the brown here. Acorns are all different colors, I've noticed. They're in the different uh, stages of development. <laughs> so some are really dark and some are light. Uh, I'm going to do a dark body. I'm going to put a little bit of purple on that. And it makes sort of a mahogany color, which I really like. Um, so I'm going to use that for my acorn. I have a lot of water on that, so I have to hit this paper towel. And don't forget, that's a real good tip for you. Always hit that paper towel. I'm not going to put the water on here because it's such a small little item, and I think we can work fast enough to... These are staining colors, so you do have to work fast. I'm going to use this little brush. Just put water on it and pull that up, okay? Because again, the light is hitting from above, and we want to indicate that. And I can make that a little more dramatic by just putting a little more dark over here. Just, just hit, you know, drop it in. Okay? Then I'm just going to rinse off the brush a little bit, and I like the little top to be a little lighter and maybe have a little more yellow, have a little yellow in it maybe. Yeah, see how this is. I like that little gold top. So I'm gonna, even though it's not really gold, I'm gonna put it in there. I like it. So with the little acorn, you'll notice it has a stem, which I, it's all different size stems. They're really amazing the way they break off and some are long and some are short and they have a little tail on. So there's your acorn. I think it's beautiful. Um, and what else? Oh, we just have to do a stem and we'll go forward with the background. So I'm thinking I would like to indicate, though, just because um, I told you I was going to see if I can just indicate some of these pumpkin lines. Remember, it's round, so you have to paint. You have to, indi you know, indicate that by your stroke. Now, intellectually, you the viewer is going to connect these lines, okay? So don't worry about putting all of it in because the viewer's eye will connect it and that's, you know, and it makes it interesting also. It gives the viewer something to do. So I'm going to go ahead and just finish the tops of these 
the stem, for instance. So what's left on your palette, you can sometimes mix together. I'm going to mix the green and the brown, a little orange, and just do the stem, okay? The stem of the pumpkin, um, I've noticed, is there's quite a lot of green to it. It's sort of putrid colors, but these three colors on my, I'm just going to use them. I used to go to a lot of watercolor classes, and I always was amazed that the instructor could use the, the, the colors on her palette to finish something. I was like, oh, I wonder if I'll ever be able to do that, but guess what? Anybody can do it. <laughs> so, um, and I love this little cap I put on this um, gourd. I think it's adorable. It just is so cute. Um, I actually just put it on myself. It wasn't there. I think it was missing. But um, all of those little things add up to make your composition really quite interesting and quite um, fun. I'm going to just take the water out of my brush, pinch it out, and take out some of this here just to make that more authentic. Okay. And that will be that on that part. Um, I'm going to show you how to do the background color. Which I'm going to have to clean this palette up to do. Sometimes you need quite a few paper towels. So I think we used our paints quite responsibly. Um, we used, uh, we mixed them up to do, you know, the remnant pieces. Okay, so with the background color, uh, which is a blue, um, blue and orange are opposite colors, and so they pretty much complement each other, and um, when you use opposite colors, the colors pop. So that's one reason I use the blue. And I'm going to mix up um, this color. Uh, I'll probably do it over here with this painting right here. Um, with these paints, you have to mix purple, purple and blue, because this blue is very... Um, it's a purple. Just a sec. I'm going to try to get these up quickly. I'm just going to do part of the um, background, so just to give you an idea how to do it. I'm going to see what this looks like. It seems like it's... Okay, sometimes that happens. You get too much purple, so just wipe it out. and add blue. Just let me see how this is. It's still too purple. Let me just take it out. Sorry. <laughs> because I'm demonstrating, I, I would probably save that paint, but let's start with blue here. Oh, you know what I think? This happened once before. <laughs> Oh, maybe not. Once before I had, I was working with these paints and um, the blue, they were two purples. And I think that's what's going on. So I think I could just use that set. That is a faux pas right there. <laughs> that happened once in class. That's why I know this is happening here. I hope. Okay, let's try this. Yeah, we'll clean this up for this person. Okay, let's try this again here. Okay, now this is the blue right here. I knew that was really off. See how that blue is? <laughs> it's just, you know. Okay, so here we are. We are back in business. Let's see what that looks like. No, it's not working. Oh, man. All we need is a little bit. 
it here. Okay, it looks like okay. Okay, I think I have my blue. And I'm gonna mix a little orange with it because I want it to be, for instance, I want it to be a little antique -y. So to dull out a blue, you add orange. Not a lot, I don't want it to be too bad. But. Okay, so I think I have my blue. So let's get rolling here. So with the background, you do the same thing. Just start with a, um, a section, okay? Put the water on. Let me see that water. Just add the water. This is a tabletop. Let me shoot. Okay, so this is how we're gonna, I'm just gonna show you how to do a section. Okay, so just go in and spread your brush the way I showed you because you're covering a lot of territory. Okay, and just let the water flow and carry that. You could add some water to that just to carry it over. See how that's happening? So what you really don't want to have a hard line here. This is my point. You want to, and I went into that pumpkin too with the water. See where the water goes, so goes the paint, right? Yeah, that'll show you right there what that happens. And that happens. Okay, so one more thing I want to. That's how you do your background. You put the water in. You get your paint ready, and you just keep adding water. I just did a little section. What I will do with this little brush, I would add more water here and pull over some paint. And that way we have a pretty uniform looking background. Now you have to ground your pumpkin. And the way I do that, this is the last little tip I'm gonna give you. Um, I make a sort of a really dark color, which I'm going to use the opposite, which is should look more blue, but it's probably a little purple. And just go not into the pumpkin, but under the pumpkin and put this little shadow because the light really isn't hitting down here. It's hitting just enough to make this a little bit of a shadow. And that's grounding your pumpkin onto the table. You can do it over here with your gourd. Things have to be grounded so they're not flying around. You can also do it with your little, your little leaf. Just make a little bit of a line here. Just a little bit of a shadow line. And that sets your leaf onto the table. With the acorn as well, just, you know, just make a little bit of a shadow. And you can come back in. I don't, I don't think that's light enough, but yeah. You can come back in and just go right, right by it. And that shadow just blends right in, you see? But you do need that grounding of your objects. So, and you can do it, you know, with all of them. So I hope that was helpful to you. With um, when you do it yourself, just continue with the background and up at the you know behind the table, it can be darker right here. You put a darker what you can do, anything you want to do. Uh, you want a different background color, you go ahead and do that because it's your painting. Also, um, these are just my colors, you know. Um, you can change these all around and do exactly what you want to do. Um, but it's a lot of fun. I hope that you um, have a good time with it. I hope you continue to paint. You have plenty of paints here to continue if you choose to. 
If you have any questions, please call me. Don't call me, but <laughs> don't call me. Email me, okay? Uh, but I will answer your questions because I really, I enjoy painting so much. I just want as many people to enjoy it as well. Um, so uh, I really enjoyed doing this today, and uh, thank you very much.